So what is the state of generative AI for the typical enterprise? Let's talk about it. So welcome back to AI Insights and Innovation, where we talk about the realities of AI and how to make it work for your enterprise. My name is Dave Linthicum, author, speaker, b Geek, and research analyst with The Cube Research. Let's get started. So this is kind of uh, uh, a little different than what we talked about in the last couple of shows, where we talked about the uh, fact that uh, a lot of uh, AI projects are tanking, bad news, uh, and also that uh, we're not training uh people within enterprises as well as we should uh, about uh, providing them with AI skills so we can be successful with AI. Also bad news, and this is kind of a uh, designed to be kind of a state of the enterprise uh, kind of show, where the enterprise is, what they're doing with generative AI and other forms of AI, what's working, what's not, where the investments are being made. And this actually comes from a Cap uh, Capgemini Research Institute report uh, which talks about uh, this. And so I'm using this report as kind of a baseline of understanding and then building on the findings of the report to talk about each aspect of this. So let's get started. So as most of us already know out there, there's been an investment surge in generative AI. You have to remember a couple of years ago, generative AI wasn't a thing. So we had machine learning, we had uh, traditional AI, uh, we had some deep learning use cases, things like that. And we had the growth in the use of AI as a foundational technology for lots of different things. For example, AI ops or AI operations where you're leveraging AI to augment the capabilities of uh, typical operations tools and other applications of it. And AI, again, has been around for a long time. It's been around since the 50s. Uh, yeah, and I, I worked on it in the 80s uh, doing list programming. Uh, so it's something that's been refining itself over time, but there's a resurgence of investment in the new form of AI, or basically generative AI, which is a derivative of machine learning, and it has some amazing capabilities. And as we all know, because we all use ChatGPT, and uh, figured out the value of leveraging that particular tool. So according to the Capgemini report, 89% of large businesses are leading the investment surge, showing that Gen AI's significance in future growth. So in other words, about 90% of the large businesses out there are investing in generative AI. I don't think that's news to anybody. I think... Uh, you know, obviously, a lot of the cloud computing shows have become generative AI shows, and it's just leading the tech press, and everybody's talking about the value of it, and derivatives of generative AI as well, such as Agentic, small language models, you know, some of the other things we talked about, you know, on this show. And the other data point would be 73% of companies with revenues between $1 billion and $5 billion, which, believe it or not, aren't, aren't big businesses, have significantly increased their uh, generative AI budgets. Uh, and so no surprise there either. Generative AI is becoming a focal point. Small businesses and large businesses are looking how to leverage generative AI as a true uh, innovative force multiplier for their business. In other words, they're trying to find some sort of angle with leveraging the technology that will take their business to the next level, providing some uh, innovative differentiators that they're able to provide in the marketplace based on the competition. And they're looking to do it before their competitors do. Uh, the ability to have uh, uh, AI-driven supply chains, the ability to have uh, AI-driven customer experiences, personalized customer experiences, all these things that allow us to sell something in the marketplace that our competitors may not be able to sell, at least initially, until they catch up. And so it's kind of a, a space race, so to speak, with who's going to leverage generative AI for the most innovative capabilities that's going to provide value to their business. Keep that in mind. So the next part of the report would be uh, generative AI maturity across different industries. 18% of organizations will fully integrate generative AI into most functions in 2024. So that's uh, actually not as progressive as a progress as you would think. I, I would think it'd be more. Um, but I think that uh, enterprises typically are slow to adopt technology. We saw this with cloud computing. Generative AI is no exception because there's money, there's budgets, you have to hire people. Uh, you can't just start bringing it in uh, to the IT organization and uh, disrupting them and moving them in a different direction without figuring out how you're going to have uh, useful planning to make that happen. High tech and financial services lead with 64% and 53% of companies are enabling uh, generative AI. So obviously, People who spend the most money on technology normally are going to be financial services and high tech, healthcare, retail. Normally, don't spend as much. They're not. Uh, they're not as interested in driving innovation. Also, they just don't seem to have the budgets. Where financial organizations like banks and brokerage houses, things like that, they can make a lot of money 
with leveraging technology. And so they're always going to invest in the new latest, greatest technology, in this case, generative AI. And we're seeing this as no different. So the typical adoption of technologies that we've had in the past, we're seeing the same sort of patterns now with generative AI. And I think we're going to see this continue. So most of the use cases for generative AI that I'm seeing out there are going to be banking systems, financial institutions, you know, people who are able to truly get to a value point of leveraging this technology quicker than other verticals like healthcare, retail, manufacturing, things like that. So this is no different and really kind of no surprise. So next would be generative AI integration across functions. Um, Gen AI, uh, Gen AI IT adoption rose from 4% to 27% across organization functions in a year. Uh, no surprise there. Um, surprise is not more than that. So in other words, there's there's a quick adoption into generative AI, not necessarily all in, but they're having a sustainable adoption process that's happening uh, within the enterprises across different functions. So different organizations within these enterprises, marketing, sales, inventory control, manufacturing, whatever they're doing as a business is all accepting generative AI as some sort of a capability they need to build, build into the processes. And this is having the... Uh, effect of approving productivity and innovation across sales, marketing, operations, R&D. So in other words, they're leveraging generative AI, and it's also providing some productivity for them. Next would be productivity and, and customer engagement gains. In other words, uh, their ability to finally get to value uh, with this technology. Organizations with Gen AI reported 7.8 increase in productivity and 6.7 uh, rise in customer engagement with uh, the use of generative AI. Um, I'm a little skeptical about this because I do think that there are implementations that are going on, but uh, obviously um, it's, you know, a, a they're all going to claim that they're getting to a productivity point and point of value early in the adoption of this technology. It's probably not as good as that, but that's what's being reported because people are very uh, bullish on generative AI and I think are uh, exaggerating as best, best I can put it. Uh, some of the productivity gains that they're getting back from this. I, I think the productivity gains are going to be there, but we're going to see them in 2025, 2026. I don't think we're going to see them or have saw them in 2024. The early adopters are seeing sig significant improvements in key performance metrics. In other words, people who are adopting generative AI and are putting it to good use probably for some very low-hanging fruit. In other words, they see applications or business problems that they can solve with AI applications, with uh, Generative AI, small language models, big language models, even some agentic AI, I'm sure, is sneaking in there as well. And they're seeing the improvements that are coming back from this. Again, probably a bit exaggerated, very much like the early days of cloud computing. We saw people, you know, uh, exaggerating some of the benefits and values they were getting back from cloud and some of the early metrics were, I think, a little deceiving. And after time, it became a little bit more realistic in terms of the actual value you were getting back from cloud versus what was being expected. And I think we're going to have the same sort of a trend here. It's just the uh, adoption of generative AI and the hype cycle of this technology is probably two to three times that of cloud computing or anything else we've, we've seen in the technology adoption space, which is interesting. So I'm kind of validating, as we talked on this show before, small language models uh, have a, are, are now the trend. And uh, obviously we talked about the fact that I don't see too many businesses building large language models just because of the expense in doing so. It's a, a hugely expensive proposition, very high powered technology needs to do it. You have massive amounts of GPUs to make that happen. And so the tactical use of AI, small language models, agentic deployments, things like that are gonna be more the trend. It's where, gonna, where we're gonna see the initial success. So the report found that 24% of the organizations already implemented have already implemented SLM, small language models, showing a growing trend. And I think that's where the primary growth is going to be. So everybody was talking a few years ago about recreating ChatGPT for their enterprise and ChatGPT for the airline industry and ChatGPT for this and that. It's not ChatGPT. It's very small tactical use cases. Um, the ability to uh, have a AI system that surrounds or automates an inventory control system, for example, some kind of a very fault, small, narrow business space that we're looking to adopt. And I think that's uh, that's how this technology is going to be adopted. So small language models are excel in industry specific applications, again, again, narrowly focused around particular industries and even processes and, and uh, silos in those particular industries. 
that's where you're going to see the value. And what's what's interesting here is that the enterprises are going to be able to build these things in probably less than six months in many instances. So it's not going to be this multi-year project and probably for less than uh, $10 million in most of the budget, which is in the budget range of getting to a value proposition after six months of building something. And I think that's where we're going to see the adoption patterns continue. So it's going to be around small language models, tactical use cases around AI, uh, agentic. Uh, we're going to see basically small tactical uses of this technology instead of these, you know, everybody trying to recreate chat GPT, which I think for most businesses is ridiculous. And speaking of agentic AI, the evolution of autonomous multi-agent systems, which is what agentic AI is, 62% of organizations are upgrading to AI agents to manage complex goals. We're going to see this explode. Uh, I think the use of AI agents, which by the way, isn't something new, but the, the whole agentic uh, concept is coming up with some of different disciplines and different ways of, of architecting the systems. And uh, I've talked about a lot, talked about that here. Uh, I have some courses out there as well. Um, and the reality is I think that is going to be a path to AI value more so uh, than anything. The ability to build autonomous agents. If you're upgrading to iOS 18, you're going to have an autonomous agent on your phone with uh, Apple intelligence. And we have a show about that as well. And I think that's, that's uh, going to be a step in the right direction because these things are smaller scale tactical uses. They run everywhere. We can run them in a, in a very complex distributed way. They're able to operate in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion or through some sort of a centralized control. We can configure them whatever way we want to configure them. And I think it's going to get to a business value stance more so than uh, building even you know large language models and small language models. So that's going to be the focus. So 48% using multi-agent systems for improved decision-making and efficiency. And again, AI agents aren't anything new, but we're seeing a resurgence and a reinterest in leveraging that technology. And by the way, we're able to create AI agents using generative AI capabilities, which provides them with more capable uses of AI, which is the reason that we're you know dump, jumping back into AI right now. So in the final item of the report, shift to autonomous operations. I think this is interesting. 82% of companies plan, on, plan to implement generative AI agents in one to three years for autonomous operations. So the ability to, in essence, moving into um, uh, uh, ubiquitous systems, uh, run everything everywhere, uh, not necessarily put everything in the cloud. I think that's that's well uh, that's a, a goal that's been well sunk. But the ability to have a very heterogeneous environments, lots of different systems, lots of different applications. We're running these agents within our delivery trucks. We're running these agents on our watches. We're running these agents on our on our computers, on our cloud servers. And the ability to have them work and play well together is just going to be a cheaper way to implement this technology. So in other words, we're not mandating that everybody get this massive amounts of GPUs. And I always thought that was silly. But the ability to kind of use commoditized computing to run these AI agents, and they don't need these um, big uh, honking processors uh, to run them or huge amounts of storage. And they're going to be more tactically focused. The agents will have their own personas, carry out uh, certain aspects of the operations, and be able to work together with any number of agents. Some of these systems are going to have you know, 10 agents, small, uh, 100 agents, medium size, or even thousands and thousands of agents, which are going to be uh, more complex deployments, but they're getting to value quicker. So the expectations of automation and workflows and productivity improvements are, are going to be... Um, there as well. So in other words, the value has to be delivered from the use of agentic AI. And I think the biggest reason that would slow down right now is some of the stuff we've been talking about uh, in the last few shows. Uh, a lot of these projects are failing. And again, they think they're failing because they don't have the training and the talent that they need to be successful. I see uh, lots of uh, job postings for uh, AI architects, AI engineers, data scientists, talent you need to build and deploy these things. And I think that the demand is way higher than the supply. And, the, and they're, they're trying to figure out how, the, how to solve those issues. So lots more people need to be in training. Lots more people um, need to be uh, working with mentors, uh, the ability to kind of figure out how to do this right. Because this isn't easy. Building these uh, complex AI systems is uh, uh, not a traditional application. There's all kinds of different moving parts. You're actually building something that has behavior and has an understanding and has to increase its understanding over time. That's more complex than traditional um, uh, structured and object-oriented systems that we've been building in the past. Keep that in mind.
Well, that's all I have for you this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to uh, check out our other materials on the Cube Research and uh, the Silicon Angle. And understand that we're working for you, trying to bring you where these trends are going and not only provide you with the data, but provide you interpretation of the data and how to understand how to make use of it and how to leverage technology to a successful conclusion for your organization. So until next time, you guys stay very safe. I'll talk to you in a week. Cheers.